David was not a believer in the Messiah. David did not know the Bible, but one night when you were 17, yes, sir. you had a vision. And it's so interesting to me, uh, this was not just one vision. He then had a second one of the same thing after he became a believer in the Messiah. It's as if God knew David's purpose before David knew God. Tell me what happened. Well, my sister asked me to babysit her children while she wanted to go skating, and I did, and I put the kids to bed. And I had a portable radio, and I was trying to turn it on to try to get a station. All of a sudden, I heard a woman scream. And it's not like it was behind the house or in front of the house. It was just like in the air. So as I went to go towards the window, I stopped and I said, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. If I go towards that window, I'm going to see something that I don't want to see. But see it, I was compelled to go. And so I pulled back the curtains. It was on the second story. And I looked down and I didn't see anything. I was like, there's nothing wrong. And then when my eyes caught the stars in the heavens, all of a sudden, I'm just like a, a big movie screen and color. The moon appeared. And it's like someone took an ice pick and poked the moon. Then blood began to ooze out of the moon. And then all the stars in the heaven began to fall all at once. And then the sky itself began to roll up as a scroll. And it was happening simultaneously. The moon turned the blood. The stars fall from the heaven. The sky roll up as a scroll. And all of a sudden, I seen a woman with long black hair. She was beholding what was happening coming upon the earth. And she began to take her fingernails and dig in her face and scream and holler. Then I seen hundreds of people running, thousands of people running, and the horror on their faces. And what God allowed me to sense what they were feeling, total helplessness total terror and all of a sudden the vision disappeared and I fell to the ground and I was trembling and shaking I was like oh my god what did I see Sid I didn't know anything about visions at the time and I was like what should I do I said maybe I get the Bible get the Bible and I was walking through the house I said please please Lord don't let me see nothing else please please don't I thought something was gonna come again I said please and I got the Bible and I just opened it up and I went to Revelations the sixth chapter beginning at the 12th verse and it began to tell about the day of the Lord and the moon turning to blood and I was like, oh God I began to look at that and I said Lord Jesus look at what's happening I seen this with my eyes and all of a sudden I called my uncle Eddie he was a preacher and I say I told him what happened he said son God just showed you a vision I said you mean to tell me I'm not going crazy he said no you're not going crazy. He said, God gave you an open vision. When you're going to say yes to Jesus? When you're going to serve the Lord? He's called you to be a preacher of the gospel. And I said, oh, I don't know if I can live saved. I don't know if I can do it. And from that day, I knew within myself, there's something I must do for God. I, I, would, I would be running to serve God. But David, he becomes a Marine. He's interested in, in his life. Uh, he's continually, continuously going down, down, down. Uh, and uh, one day he's at work. Uh, someone invites him to go to church with him. And he had an accident that almost cost him his life. What happened to you? The boss brought me a big old check, and I said, me and my brother's going out. We're going to party tonight. And I thought about it. I told that pastor I was coming to his church, and then I, I, I said, no, I'm not going. When I made my mind up not to go, I fell on the conveyor belt. And I tried to lift myself up, see it, but I had no strength. Then God himself allowed me to hear my heartbeat. Po, 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 po. I said, oh, no. Po, po. I started fading out, and I wanted to lift myself up, but I had no strength. Po, po. I said, oh, no, please. I began to pray. Give me another chance, Lord. Please, please, Lord. I'll go to this man of God. Give me another chance. And I came back and all the people were around me saying, are you all right? I went like this. Don't do me like this. I'll go to this man of God church. <laughs> the next thing I know, I'm going home. I'm getting ready. Here come my friends coming to party. They was like, hey, man, I said, I went out on the porch. I said, hold it. I'm not going with you guys today. I said, I'm going to the house of God. Y'all don't know. I almost died today. They was like, what? I said, I'm going. They say it's Friday. It's our party night. I said, y'all can't keep my heart beating. I'm going to the house of God. And I went and I sat in the back of the church and had evangelists preaching a fiery message. As he began to preach. Um, the conviction started hitting me and I said I got to save myself and so I got up and as I started walking towards him all of a sudden said the devil said get out of this church run out of here get out of here and my legs began to get weak and I was like no 
No, I know what's right. I've been brought up in church as a little boy. I remember. I remember. And when I got to him, he said, son, do you want to be saved? I said, sir, yes, sir. I want to be saved. And I went to grab his hand and all of a sudden the power got hit me and I flew straight backwards. But when I hit the floor, there wasn't no ushers there to let me down easy. But it, <laughs> but it was like falling on a bed of cotton. Then all of a sudden the girls was looking at me back then. Uh, I thought I was a cool daddy. Then I said, let me get off the floor. All these beautiful girls looking at me. <laughs> then the supernatural began and it began in my belly then it got in my chest then it got in my throat then my tongue began to cleave to the roof of my mouth and then I began to hear myself speak in a heavenly language as the spirit of God give others pretty soon I didn't care about those girls all of a sudden I started experiencing such joy such peace I never experienced before I was addicted to crack cocaine acid mescaline THC alcohol but God delivered me now I have a joy and a peace I've never experienced before and I got off the floor and I was just speaking in my heavenly language and then the ushers were trying to grab me and the pastor said let him go God has him now okay now what happened to your alcohol addiction what happened to your drug addiction totally gone instantly healed by the mighty God of Israel I'll tell you now when when God can take someone like him and flatten him on the floor, yes. have him speak in a supernatural language, and get delivered, and have him... Now, it's been like 25 years 25 you've been years. in ministry, but I am going to take you to February 2012. What happened to you? Well, I got up to go use the restroom, and as I was coming back, and I was getting back in the bed, it's like someone grabbed me by the arm and <clears throat> shook me. Next thing I know, I'm catapulted into an open vision, and I'm hovering about 200 feet over the earth and I can see all the beautiful skies and the sun and all the happiness people going to and fro in the land mothers with their children going into the grocery stores people pumping gas businessmen with their ties and briefcase going into the buildings and all of a sudden a thick darkness and clouds started appearing upon the earth and then all of a sudden there was a sound from heaven a sound that I have never heard before in all my born days it was like seven claps of thunder other than to one the sound was so deafening not only did it pierce the ears of all mankind but it began to pierce their skeleton that when they heard it their bodies began to shake and quake and this sound was so deafening people begin to scream then all of a sudden like someone took a razor blade and split the heavens then here come the son of God with all his bands of angels and all his glory oh see it in the colors were glorious splendid magnificent glorious the blues the golds the greens I never seen such colors like this and he was coming speedily on the earth then people begin to urinate on themselves and scream and then one man say no 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 wait 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 I thought I had time I thought I had time but too late all time it ran out for all mankind another man he was like an Indian guy real short he began to say no 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 this is a dream this is a dream I'm gonna wake up but see he couldn't wake up because he was already woke then I heard a voice from heaven saying, This is the day of the Lord. It has come. And I came out of the vision, trembling on the floor, and I'm shaking and quaking within myself. And I begin to pray for me. I didn't pray for my mother, my wife, my children. I begin to intercede for me because God allowed me to see such terror. Terror, we know God is love and he's mercy and he's long-suffering and he's gentle and he's kind. But see, there's another part of God that mankind has not been introduced to. And that's the terror of the Lord. Such terror, such horror. And I begin to repent repent over my own life Lord save me God forgive me because he allowed me to sense what everyone was feeling and I begin to repent because I say God I want to be pleasing to you Lord if I have hurt you or, 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 or come against you in any shape form or another please forgive me Lord Lord please allow me to be counted worthy to go back with you I have seen the day of the Lord then the Lord spoke to me say I charge you now to warn all mankind and he said it like this I'm coming I'm coming I'm coming I'm coming whether they will believe you or not give them warning from you whether they receive you or not give them warning from you for the day of the Lord is at hand you heard that now what are you going to do about it mm. I'm going to tell you something 
if you are lukewarm, you are backslidden, and you are not prepared for the day of the Lord. You are either going forward red hot for the Messiah or deceived, no in between. Yes. Believe that Jesus died for your sins. Repent, tell him you're sorry, and believe that he has washed your sins away as if they never existed. And then say, Jesus, with your own words, I make you my Lord, come and live inside of me. I make you Lord of my life. Do that now. God has given you a very strong charge to tell people. But simultaneously, God is telling many people, from even that are not believers in the Messiah, the same thing. For instance, Orthodox Jews in Israel are being told that we are in the footsteps of the coming of the Messiah. In other words, they know something is up in the air. About the same time that David had that dream, I had a dream. And in my dream, it, you know, I wasn't even, David, I wasn't even thinking about this. It didn't cross my radar. If someone had said to me, uh, the Lord is coming back soon, I would have said, yes, I believe that. But, you know, I'm 73. In my heart of hearts, I'm not sure I really believe that. You're supposed to say he's coming back soon. You're supposed to live like he's coming back soon. But there just seems to be so much that has to be done. But it's not up to my peanut brain. It's up to God. And this is what God showed me in the dream. He said to me three times, I'm coming back soon. I'm coming back soon. I'm coming back soon. David, between you and me, what did you believe in your heart about the Lord's return? I mean, between the two of us. <clears throat> well, uh, I didn't think it was close. I mean, according to all the scriptures and the revelation teachers and the scholars, I knew it was going to come, but I wasn't sure. But now I'm absolutely sure that he's coming at an hour and at a time when man least expected. What should someone do that's just heard this message and believes it's from God? Set their house in order. Whatever they need to do for God, they must do quickly. If they need to ask for forgiveness, they better do it quickly. If they need to go to their mother, father, sister, brother, ask for forgiveness, they need to go get things straight before it's everlasting too late. Because the terror of the Lord is like something I've never seen in my entire life. Okay, let me take you. I know you're living a holy life. Mm -hmm. I know that you love God. Right after that open vision, what did you do? I began to repent and cry out to God. But you repented. I know you. You repented way before a vision like that. Not like this one. Not like this one. Because he made it so real to me. It was so real. And it was so overpowering and overtaking that men and women could not even think straight when it happened. And he came so suddenly, just like he said he would. Why is there so much urgency in you giving this message? I, I, I mean, I've never seen someone with such a compulsion like in an urgency in your voice. Why? Because there's an unction with inside of me that I don't have much time. You don't have much time. We don't have much time. And I must preach it. And I must proclaim it just as Noah did for 120 years that it was going to rain. But they turned a deaf ear to Noah. They didn't believe that man of God. But the Bible say, God said unto Noah, come you and your family into the ark. For he opened up the windows of heaven. And the windows of heaven poured out the water upon the land. And everything that breathed through nostrils died. Just like God said he would. I want you to choose this day whom you're going to serve. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the living God. Amen.